This is going to be a two part video. We're going to be talking about different health categories for our objects. For this video, we're going to be jumping into vCenter and looking at those health categories. And in the next video, we're going to be jumping into the command line and looking at a bunch of debug commands and looking at the categories in that manner. So let's jump into vCenter. I'm going to start off by clicking on cluster, click on monitor, and then go down to health. From there, I'm going to go to our data section. We're going to click on our vSAN object health, and we can see a list of all different health states of our objects. For this video, we're using a vSAN 6 environment because vSAN 6 shows all the different types of health categories, where vSAN 7 only shows the applicable. So we'd only see objects in a healthy state, a reduced availability state, et cetera, et cetera. And one other thing to mention is in vSAN 6, we've got our vSAN health checks. In vSAN 7, we've got our Skyline health checks. We went through a little bit of a rebranding from 6 over to 7. With that out of the way, let's talk about our different categories. Our first one is healthy. This is where we want to see all of our objects. This means that all of our objects are available and they match their storage policies. Let's go and put one of our hosts in maintenance mode and see what happens when we do that. I'm going to click on the refresh button. You know, notice our objects are still saying healthy, even though we know they're not in a healthy state because we just took one of our three nodes away. If that happens in your environment, we can click on the retest button in the upper right hand corner. We'll now notice our objects have changed to a reduced availability with no rebuild delay timer. This is our 60 minute timer. So after the 60 minute timer elapses, vSAN will make a determination, should we kick off a resync or shouldn't we kick off a resync? In this particular environment, we've got three nodes with a RAID 1 FTT of one policy requiring a minimum of three ESXi hosts. So in this particular situation, vSAN can't kick off a resync even though it wants to. As a result, we'll move our objects over to reduced availability with no rebuild. Let's change the scenario just a little bit. Let's say we've got a four node environment. We put host one in maintenance mode and that 60 minute timer elapses. At that point, vSAN can kick off a resync. It'll move those objects into our reduced availability category. And then to verify our resync or see if we have a resync running, we can click on our resyncing objects. This will tell us how many objects are in the resync, how much data we have to resync, and the time to completion. This is vSAN's best guesstimate at when it'll be done but there are a lot of factors that go into determining when it will be complete. So just kind of look at it and say, okay, this is roughly when it will be done. Underneath of that, we've got our scheduled resyncing. Since we're not running a resync at this moment, vSAN saying at this particular time, we're gonna resync 11 objects if we can. If we click on view more, we can see what are those 11 objects and what is those current states. While we don't have a resync running at this moment, I did in a separate environment configure resync to run, and this is what that would look like. Let's go back to our vSAN object health. And let's talk about the remaining categories. We've got our non-availability related reconfig. So let's say we've got a four node environment. And up to this point, we've been using RAID 1 FTT of 1. But we decided one day we want to change some of these objects over to RAID 5. Maybe that OS disk, we want to save some space on it, change that over to a RAID 5 policy. We create the new policy, apply it to our VMDK. We build a brand new VMDK object, a brand new RAID 5 VMDK object, and begin that resync process. While that resync process is running from RAID 1 over to RAID 5, that's where this category comes into play. Because we had a healthy object beforehand, we'll have a healthy object afterwards, but we're changing that policy from RAID 1 over to RAID 5. Our next category is data move. As we start creating objects in the environment, vSAN starts placing them on our physical disks. Once one of the disks gets above 80%, vSAN will trigger a data move operation. It'll say, what components can I take on this disk and move it somewhere else to bring those disks in a little bit more of an alignment. So let's say we've got a disk that's 80% being utilized, a disk that's being 40% utilized. It'll see what can I move over to bring that in a little bit more of alignment. But there's a lot of little caveats that come into play. So for example, will this operation violate our storage policy? If I move this component over, will us still work with our RAID 1, our RAID 5, RAID 6 storage policy? Because we don't want to violate that. The other thing we'll look at is, if I take this component and move it over, do I make the situation better or do I make the situation worse? And sometimes if we can't satisfy those two requirements, we won't do a data move operation. So in this particular situation, I actually was able to trigger this event. So we can dive a little bit further into it. We can see our average disk usage is 37%. Our maximum disk usage is 68% with a variance of 62%. So the difference between the disks is 62%. So vSense says, I want to do a rebalance operation or a data move operation, 
but I can't without violating those two items that we talked about earlier. To get a little bit more information about this, we can click on our disk balance option, where we can see on host two, vSAN wants to move five gigs worth of data, and on host three, it wants to move four gigs worth of data. But if it does, it might violate our storage policy, or it may not make the situation any better, so it's choosing not to. If we click on the info tab, we can get a little bit more information about this health check. If you want to open up a KB article, we can click on the Ask VMware button. If you are in this situation, we can click on the proactive rebalancing disk operation and see, does that make it any better? It won't make it worse. It won't harm the environment. So we can go through that process if we want to. But if we're trying to solve this, usually actually creating more objects to allow vSAN to balance that out or adding more hardware would hopefully resolve this issue. So it shouldn't hurt your environment. I know sometimes it's annoying to see that warning, but vSAN is trying its best to move the data around. So now we've talked about this category, let's head back to our vSAN object health. We have two more categories to talk about before we wrap up this video. Let's start off with our inaccessible objects. This is when vSAN has suffered more failures than it's designed to tolerate. We currently have a three node environment with using a RAID 1, FTT of one policy. A failure is a tolerate of one. And that says we can tolerate a single failure in the environment. Well, let's say we've got one host in maintenance mode and we've got a control that fails or disk that fails or network outage that happens on one of those other nodes. Well, we've suffered two failures in the environment, which is more than we specified for our storage policy. In that case, vSAN has lost quorum, or we may have had loss of data availability. We'll put our objects in an inaccessible state. And to fix that, we need to bring one of the hosts out of maintenance mode or try to resolve whatever happened in the environment to bring those objects back into a healthy state. Our last category is our non-availability related in compliance. This is a catch-all state. If for some reason, none of these other categories match, then we'll put our objects in this category. For me personally, I've never seen this case. And based on this KB article, we don't have a documented case for it, but we do have this category just in case we need it. So at this point, I think we're at a good place to wrap up this video. We use a vSAN 6 environment to talk about all of our different health categories, from healthy to reduced availability, to inaccessible, to data move, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In the next video, we'll be jumping into a vCN7 environment and looking at a variety of debug commands to see similar information that we talked about in this video. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.